here we are, pleasant morning. Last presentation was late at night. Uh, the quality might have been brilliant as far as the image was concerned. But uh, Mr. Cat, the producer, has been disciplined and uh, he said that uh, as long as the cash comes in the mail, he'll be happy to uh, produce this one. Look, on a much more serious note, I'd like to talk about the axis of evil. Not Mr. Bush's Junior's axis of evil. North Korea, Syria and Iran. The scourge of evil which has bedeviled the human race since time immemorial which has become more acute with the centralization of power and wealth in fewer and fewer hands and to a significant degree this axis of evil, this scourge of humanity has become more entrenched and I'm talking about three things I'm talking about God, King and country. Let's define these elements. When I talk about God, I don't talk about people's spirituality or their relationship with a particular deity or multiple deities. But what I'm talking about is organised religion. When I'm talking about king, I'm not just talking about a hereditary monarch. I'm talking about dictators, people who are elected to power like presidents and prime ministers. I'm talking about centralisation of power. When I talk about country, I talk about the sovereign nation state. Let's not forget there are about 206, 207 so-called sovereign nation states on the planet today. And if you look at the history of humanity and the history of the carnage which has been part of that story, most of that carnage and brutality hasn't occurred because of people's interpersonal disputes, although obviously there's always interpersonal disputes and some spill over to violence and murder. But on a mass scale we see mass death when people try to impose their religious practices on other people, when people consider other people who don't believe in their particular version of what God is or isn't and put them to the sword when we talk when people talk about them being chosen by God to be on this planet and nobody else really matters we see the intolerance and the brutality that accompanies organized religion and to a significant degree that brutality and intolerance that mass murder is related to the fact that power is centralized in a religious authority who then uses that power to impose their will on other people. Now obviously over history we've seen many theocracies come and go. We've seen many gods come and go. We've seen many elements of spirituality come and go but ultimately it's not that personal belief which people have or don't have. What it is is when we give power to a central authority. The same situation applies with king, dictator, president, prime minister. It's about the centralization of power. When we see in Australia where one man, the Prime Minister, can declare war 
as we saw in John Howard's invasion of Iraq, despite massive protests, much bigger than the, the Vietnam moratoriums across this country. And we see the deployment of armed forces. We see the amount of power which is invested in an individual. And how that individual can then use that power to try to subjugate those around them. So once again, it's the centralisation of power. The more checks and balances, the less centralisation of power. The fewer checks and balances, the more centralisation of power, as we saw in Pol Pot's Kampuchea or Cambodia, as we saw with Stalin, as we saw with Hitler. We have individuals who, because of the structures which we support as communities, able to exercise power which can result in the deaths of millions, if not tens of millions of people. And historically we've seen this from time immemorial, where some leader, some dictator, some self-appointed you know, guru, some religious maniac, somehow is able to use that power to try to impose their will on everybody else. Then we have the sovereign nation state. A lot of people think that sovereign nation states have existed since time immemorial. Sovereign nation states haven't existed since time immemorial. We've had city states, we've had local organisations, we've had municipal um, organisations which are based on municipality or specific geographical area. But the sovereign nation state is a relatively new phenomenon. And we've seen people with a similar background, a similar culture, maybe a similar language in the more established sovereign nation states mark a border and defend that border. And obviously in a more multicultural society like Australia the United States, that sovereign nation state is based more on a territorial integrity than a cultural integrity or a specific language group or a specific ethnic composition. Interestingly, the time you see this presentation, the 18th of March will come and go. The 18th of March is the 152nd anniversary of the Paris Commune. The first workers' government in the history of humanity. On the 18th of March, 1871, the Paris Commune was formed after a number of failed attempts by the state to maintain its territorial integrity. It had a policy which actually overturned the axes of evil, the tyranny of organised religion, the tyranny of the nation-state, the tyranny of, of the absolute ruler. And they paid a heavy price for this. 30,000 executed in one week. It's interesting that most of the brutality that has occurred on the planet has come from the so-called civilised world whether it's its imperialist ventures, destroying First Nations people around the world, whether it's battles and wars against its own people who try to assert their authority. So what they talked about radical democracy. They had elections. They passed legislation which gave people the grassroots level, real power. They abolished the armed forces, they abolished conscription, they decreed the separation of power of the state and religion. They promoted an anti-militarist agenda. They said the flag of the commune was the flag of the world republic. 
they made no divisions between Parisians and non-Parisians as far as their participation in all aspects of the commune's life. So this was one brief moment in human history. And human history is dotted with brief moments when people overturn, overpower the axis of evil, the scourge of organised religion, the scourge of hereditary heads of states or heads of states that are self-appointed or even elected, the scourge of national boundaries, where as we see today, as we approach you know, the second quarter of the 21st century, we see this ongoing brutality between so-called sovereign nation states. We see Russia invade Ukraine. We see Australia forming alliances with the United States and India and Japan in an attempt to contain another sovereign nation state, China. Ultimately, it's not the colour of the foot that's on your neck. It's the fact it's the foot on your neck. And what the Paris Commune highlighted is that we, as human beings, have other options. We don't need to be servants of organised religion. We don't need to be servants of self-appointed, hereditary or even elected leaders. We don't need to sacrifice ourselves to maintain a sovereign nation state. Another important period in Australian history was World War I. If you listen to all the jingoism which we hear on the 25th of April, which will soon be upon us, we forget that the anti-conscription movement in this country saved more lives of Australian, young Australian men than any other option. And there were people who fought against conscription to sacrifice people on foreign battlefields. And ultimately, wars are fought by workers at either end of a gun or at either end of a bayonet. They're not fought by those who maintain authority. They sit in the background. They give orders, and as we saw in World War I and World War II, when people are captured, they become prisoners of war. The type of treatment that ordinary soldiers receive in comparison to their officers is chalk and cheese. So why should we continue to support the axis of evil? Organised religion, centralised power, sovereign national borders. Aren't we all ultimately composed of the same DNA? Our ancestors, our Cro-Magnon ancestors, destroyed every other human a variation on the planet. There were 55 different types of humans over hundreds of thousands of years. And we now control the planet. But we don't control the planet in terms of it nurturing us into the future, as many First Nations people did, especially in this country, for two, over 2,000 generations. What we are doing is we are destroying the very elements which give us the ability to survive and prosper. And for what? Consumption for consumption's sake? Religious fervour? Devotion to country? For what? Because ultimately, people are asked to make sacrifices for their country, for democracy, for their religious beliefs. But ultimately who benefits? Is it those people who worship 
those people who cast the ballots, those people who fly the flag, or is it that 1% that owns the means of production, distribution, exchange and communication and the investment class in this society? Why should we support the axis of evil, the scourge of organised religion, the scourge of hereditary leadership, self-appointed leadership and sovereign national boundaries? It's something we need to think about. Ultimately, human history, as I said before, is littered with little examples of people who've resisted. And in most cases, they've been crushed in the most horrendous manner. Everybody knows about the reign of terror during the French Revolution in 1792, which went over a number of years. But who knows about the fact that in the last week of, from, the 8th, from the 17th to 21st of October over 30,000 people in Paris were indiscriminately slaughtered because they had another vision because they didn't want to support the axis of evil because they believed that human beings have the capacity to work cooperatively together to resolve the issues that we all face. And these issues become more acute as the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the coming apocalypse, come closer. Increasing greenhouse emissions as a result of human intervention in the natural environment. Increasing population growth, although some people say it will stabilise at 10 billion in the next few years or so finite resources. Not everybody has the capacity to get on a spaceship and leave planet Earth. And an economic system which dominates every aspect of existence on the planet, an economic system which is based on the increasing consumption, an economic system which is based on the mantra of making ever increasing profits irrespective of the human social environmental and personal costs. So think about it. What were you placed on this planet for? Why were you born? Why do we struggle? Why do we attempt to survive? Is consumption enough? Is a religious belief enough? Are we implacable enemies because we live in different sovereign nation states, have a different skin colour? have a different language, different gender, different sexual orientation. Think about it.